End of the line, you filthy half-breed. Your girl is one lucky girl. She is marrying one of the finest married key men I have ever met. Wait, wait, what? He's made key? Oh. Get away from us, you filthy half-breed. And you take this handsome young man as your husband? Wait, what? Stop, stop, stop. The marriage is off. Get away from her, you filthy half-breed. What? Why? Is there a problem? You are made tea, aren't you? Yeah. Well, get out! And this is where my journey began. On the way home, I noticed the rising tension between the Métis and the government of Manitoba. We were not being treated properly. Someone had to do something, so I decided to take a stand. Brothers, sisters, tonight we will lay siege on the Hudson Bay Company's headquarters, Fort Gary. So prepare yourselves, for if we succeed, we will no longer be treated like foreigners or called half-breeds and we will gain our rights like any other citizen. Today we will earn our name as the Métis. We'll show them what we're really capable of. And we did capture Fort Gary, without firing a single bullet in fact. It was not long though before people plotted to take it back. Thomas Scott was one of these men. Real is a coward. In fact, when I get out of here, I will put a bullet right through his thick skull. I bet he doesn't even have the guts to kill me. Excuse me? You should have chosen your words more carefully, scumbag. No, I'm important. I know people that won't stand for this. You can't do this. We're just following orders from Louis Riel himself. The death of Scott resulted in the government of Manitoba placing a bounty of $5,000 on my head. I fled to the U.S. where some of my friends left me at Beauport Asylum for my mental well-being. After I was discharged from Beauport Asylum, I headed to Batash in Saskatchewan for one final battle. Alongside Gabriel Dumont, I led the Métis in battle. The battle lasted three days, but it was only a time before we defeated. After the battle, I turned myself in. It was the only thing left to do. <laughs> 